If you said that, I would die. I would have died. <laughs> That's funny as. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before, or hi, welcome if you're new. My name's Mickey, I'm a therapist, and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Today we are talking about Am I the Asshole again? Because you guys seem to enjoy the videos, I enjoyed making them, uh, so we're gonna dive back into the subreddit again. For those of you who don't know, Am I the Asshole is a subreddit, it's a place on the internet where people air out their problems and share a scenario with a bunch of strangers on the internet and ask, you know, the, the sort of people on the internet, am I the person in this scenario who's an asshole or is someone else? The asshole. We have talked about this before and so I will link those videos up here if you want to watch those. But before we dive into the stuff that I have saved for today, I want to be super clear. We are diving into this subreddit and talking about this material for educational and entertainment purposes and I really don't want to use my professional expertise to label anyone as an asshole or not an asshole. I think that's inappropriate and I also think it's kind of mean. And so we are mostly talking about this subreddit and these particular scenarios for the purpose of opening a conversation about these topics from an evidence-based perspective. Um, I like being able to share my professional expertise in the education that I have with you guys about these like real life scenarios to sort of, you know, like not necessarily weigh in on these particular people's lives, but just like, like I said, host a conversation about these issues from an evidence-based point of view. So that's what we're doing. That's the things. I don't think I have anything else. Let's do the damn thing. Okay. So this says, am I the asshole for getting angry at my spouse for trying to seek unsolicited mental health resources for me after opening up to her? Preface, I, 35 male, have struggled with various bouts of depression and anxiety pretty much my entire life and I'm very introverted. As a result, I have become very good at bottling up emotions and feelings unconsciously and building walls so that to outsiders I appeal or appear normal and happy. I know this isn't healthy and I've been to therapists before, but a few bad experiences with therapists and counselors have left me extremely distrusting of them. I also hate the thought of people worrying about me, so not even my closest friends or family are aware of my struggles. My wife has always kind of known that I struggle with stress and anxiety and depression, especially in recent years with my job and having two kids under the age of five. Recently, we had a deep discussion and I let my walls down a little bit and I told her the truth about my mental struggles and how I sometimes have intrusive thoughts and how while I experience fleeting moments of happiness all the time, they don't seem to damper the depression as much as they used to. Sharing this made me extremely anxious and I told her that the reason I don't talk any talk more about them uh, is because of my trust issues with outsiders, especially strangers. She seemed understanding. Fast forward to a couple days later and she asks if we can talk. I agree, but right away I feel dread. She brings up a document on the computer and starts reading this clearly rehearsed speech that hits all the hallmarks of typical counselor language. I listen patiently, but I am very upset. After finally opening up and explaining my mental state and my trust issues with outsiders, in only a matter of less than 48 hours, she had already told someone else, a professional clearly, who had given her talking points. She hadn't asked me if it was if I was okay with it or if I wanted it. I felt so betrayed. I listened until she finished, then I told her that I was not going to engage with this conversation because I felt my trust had been betrayed. She kept pushing, telling me how worried she was and how she had done nothing wrong. She wanted me to answer some probing questions. I told her I would if she would swear we, we wouldn't be discussing them with anyone else. She remained silent, which was all the answer I needed. I know her heart was in a good place, but I just feel like the trust I had is shattered and the walls are now back up even stronger than before. I know she means well, but I didn't ask for help, just support and empathy. Am I the asshole for feeling so upset about this? So, wow, there's, <laughs> there's a lot here. First and foremost, the thing that I wanna lead with in both this scenario and in all of these situations generally is that people are always allowed to feel how they feel. Part of my frustration with these subreddits and these, um, like, this sort of, like, forum style like you know voting and weighing in thing is that it can turn into moralizing and judging people's emotional reactions to things which personally I find unhelpful. One of the things that I say all the time <laughs> to my clients is whether or not it's you know we're gonna label your emotional reaction to this as like toxic or unhealthy or like wrong. For better or for worse it is what it is. You do feel that way and the work is not in figuring out how to force yourself to feel something different. It's in learning how to acknowledge that that's happening for you and to move forward with that by like coping that and expressing that in a way that is safe for you that's safe for the people around you and that promotes the well-being of everybody involved and so i i don't love like some of the the comments on this particular thread feel very uh like thought policey about <laughs> like you shouldn't think this way and while i 
you know, we're going to talk about like the boundary issues and like those types of things in a minute. I do just want to encourage people to honor that if you have an emotional reaction to something, it's okay to feel how you feel, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're allowed to behave however you want to behave, which is another important thing for us to address here. Mental illness and therapy and like mental health in relationships is hard, you know? It's like a sticky situation because the truth and the fact of the matter is that, I mean, we've talked about boundaries extensively on this channel. I have a whole playlist, I will put it up here. But the purpose of setting boundaries, especially in relationships with a romantic partner, is not to control other people. And so in this boundary of like, I want to share things with you, but you're not allowed to communicate that to anyone else, that's not a very fair or realistic or healthy expectation because we can't. We can't force other people to do or not do things and the boundaries ideally are self-focused. So I think it's fair to say that this person uh, said, you know, like I wanna remove myself from this situation. Like that's, that's a boundary. Like that's a, a boundary that you can feasibly set to say like, I feel uncomfortable or unsafe in this conversation. Um, and so therefore I'm choosing to not participate in it. But the like, I just want to tell you things and you're not allowed to do anything with them feels unequal to me. The other thing that I wanted to touch on here is that again, I don't know these people. None of us know these people because the, the way that Reddit is, it's inherently anonymous and we know nothing about these people's lives or about the context or about the um, history of their relationship. And so I think it's unfair and irresponsible for us to make definitive statements about who's right or wrong or justified or not justified. But I will say if you find yourself in a situation similar to this where you're feeling like your partner could benefit from therapy or you're feeling very overwhelmed by carrying the weight of their mental illness, it is okay for you to seek support and resources for your own self um, to make sure that you're okay. Because being a support person, being a caregiver for someone with mental illness can be very taxing and it can be very scary, especially when you love someone and you care about them and you want them to be well. Um, and if they're not in a place where they're able to seek resources or they're not ready to do that, um, that's a very hard thing to do, you know, and we are all allowed to make choices about our own mental, physical, emotional well-being. And so if you need that support, that's okay. Um, I don't know that I agree with the characterization that this is a betrayal because a person should be allowed to prioritize their own sense of well-being regardless of whether that information is being shared with someone, you know, that you like maybe didn't want them to. And it's also not lost on me that this information was shared with a therapist, it sounds like, which is different than sharing it with you know, a coworker or family members or like staging an intervention with the neighbors, you know, like this person sought out support and resources from a, a I'm assuming licensed or trusted professional for the purpose of their own well being and, and, you know, potentially helping their partner. So there's lots of gray area here, but I think the takeaway with this and the, the reason I wanted to talk about this is that relationships and mental illness are messy and it's hard and there's not necessarily a perfect right or wrong answer, but it is okay for you to seek resources for yourself. Um, and especially for the partner who is um, trying to support someone through the process of healing uh, a mental illness to utilize whatever resources you need to take care of yourself first because that's a very common misstep I guess or like trope of like I oh I have to like be everything for this person and that's not a super safe option so um, just take care of yourself I guess <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Okay, this says, am I the asshole for what I told my mother-in-law when she asked to be in the delivery room? My husband, uh, 33 male, and I, female 30, are expecting a baby boy. Uh, we're barely catching up with preparation and getting everything ready. His mom, kind of a busybody type but can be helpful at times, invited us for dinner and said she has an important request to make. She brought up her request at dinner and blatantly said that she wanted to be in the delivery room with me when I gave birth. I was taken aback by her request. I really thought that it it had something to do with the nursery or a diaper brand. I said I was sorry, but only my mom and my husband will be there. She made a face, got quiet for a while, and then brought it up again. Just kept saying she is as much of a grandmother as my mom and that she just wanted to be there for support and get the opportunity to see her grandbaby's first moments. My husband decided with her. I just stared at her and said, it's all right, you can have the opportunity to be in the delivery room when your son is the one who's giving birth. <laughs> Everyone stopped eating and my mother-in-law left the table in an instant. My husband had me uh, get up, although I wasn't finished with dinner, and he said that we should leave. In the car, he lost it on me, asking what 
brain cell made me think it was a good idea to tell his mom that. I told him his mom kept pushing me after I'd already given her an answer. Still, he said that this was the most fucked up shit he had heard me say. I replied that I just felt frustrated um, and didn't mean to hurt her feelings and cause issues. He argued that if I don't want issues, then I should stop making shit difficult and just say yes to his mom's request. He then ranted about how it's his son too um, and then said if his mom isn't allowed in there, then he won't be there too. Now, I don't know if he really meant this or just said it in uh, the heat of the moment, but it just had me fuming. He's been ignoring me when I try to talk to him and act like I'm not in the room. Uh, I think I might have gone too far and created tension by responding inappropriately. Am I the asshole? <sighs> if you said that shit, I would die. I would have died. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. That's First of all, sick burn. That's funny. <laughs> So there's a lot to unpack here. Let's let's just fucking start from the top. Let me scroll back up here. First and foremost, I want to empower anybody who is a person who is going to give birth to feel comfortable and confident and empowered and to surround yourself with people who will help you support the decision to only have whoever you want there when um, you're in the process of shooting something that's the size of a watermelon out of a very sensitive organ. It's a lot. Childbirth, I've never had a child, but it sounds fucking metal and just doesn't seem like it's a very fun time. It sounds like it can be very traumatizing and something that people need a lot of support through. Um, and so I really want to encourage people to feel okay and allowed to set boundaries around that. Um, because again, like, you just, you're allowed. The other thing about this that I wanted to touch on is the like discord that we saw between the partners here. Um, the like my husband sided with my mother-in-law while we were having this conversation thing, in my opinion, can be a red flag about conflict resolution in the relationship. And again, I wanna be super clear, we don't fucking know these people. I don't know anything about them and I'm certainly not making any claims about the health of their relationship um, or like speaking with any absolute certainty. However, it can be very helpful in situations like this to be aware of the way that your statements and behaviors and interactions with family can potentially influence the outcome of that interaction. Because in this scenario, the, the, the partners, husband and wife, hadn't had the opportunity to talk with each other about what the comfort level was. Personally, I am of the mind that the person who is giving birth should have ultimate say over who's in the room, but everyone will land in a different place with that and that's okay. If um, husband felt strongly about who he wanted in the delivery room, whatever. But that conversation is something that ideally from a conflict resolution perspective is being hosted in private without the eyeballs, without the opinions and without the pressure of other people. Um, and so I really want to encourage folks when we have these moments where there is an outside person weighing or like, you know, pushing and like pressuring you and your partner to make a decision, but you guys haven't had the opportunity to talk about it yet. It's very much okay for you to say like, I don't know, we'll talk about it. Um, and to just be careful about <laughs> how the things that you're saying might like sort of clue other people into whether you agree or disagree because especially if somebody is a chronic boundary violator like this mother-in-law sounds like she is the the husband siding with mother-in-law adds fuel to the fucking fire it emboldens the person who's a chronic boundary violator to go see see this person agrees with me and so you should agree with me too and it furthers the issue and it also can create further issues down the line with setting this precedent that like not only is, is this okay for me to violate boundaries, but if I do so, then my son essentially will side with me instead of his wife. This is a very complicated like triangulation dynamic to end up in. And so just be mindful of that. If you have someone in your life who's a chronic boundary violator, it can be helpful to also think about it in this way where your um, choices in this moment are to prioritize the comfort of your life partner and to prioritize the comfort of your mother. Um, and whatever decision you want to make is, to me, a personal decision. And it's important for people to practice an attitude of judgmentalism, I guess. But also that we're not exempt from the consequences of those decisions. And so in this situation, the husband choosing to side with his mother-in-law meant that he alienated his wife. And it sounds like eroded some of the trust there. That's a consequence of a decision that was made and it's important for us to sit with the accountability of that, which is another thing that I wanted to talk about here. This like, you know, it would have just been easier if you had just sided with my mom. And so like, you're the one who's making things difficult. Absolutely fucking not. 
absolutely not. That's not an okay thing to say. This is a very manipulative and ugh, I don't want to label it as abusive because I, again, we don't know these people, all the caveats. Um, but if you do find yourself in a situation with someone who is telling you that you are being difficult for prioritizing your own safety or for making choices about what you will do with your own body or uh, physical space, red flag. Super fucking red flag because it's not appropriate for someone to issue you directives like this, especially in a romantic relationship. The ideal perspective is that the partner or partners involved are making collaborative decisions with the perspective that we're a team, we're a unit, and we're operating from the perspective of what's best for us as a whole, not me, me, me. We talked about this ad nauseum in the Love is Blind videos. And we, when we go into relationships with this perspective of like only what's good for me, we are inevitably going to hurt the partner or partners that we're in a relationship with. And again, like, if you want to do that, that's that's your choice, but you do have to own the consequences for that. And sometimes the consequences are that the relationship ends because we have no trust. We have no buy-in anymore. So food for thought there. This says, am I the asshole? My brother, my brother, my boyfriend's mother is upset because I set boundaries for myself. I guess this is like the boundaries episode. <laughs> I'm 19, my boyfriend is 18 and his mother is mid to late fifties. Uh, a couple of nights ago, when me and my boyfriend got back to his place, he still lives with his parents. They're passing the house to him. We were talking to, uh, we were talking and his mother kept standing really close to me. I'm very shy and I never speak up about my boundaries, but I was getting overwhelmed. So I said, I'd like to not be leaned against right now, please. And she looked genuinely upset slash offended. The next day, me and my boyfriend were at work and he told me about how his mother talked to him. Um, about how I have to be okay with being touched a lot because it's their culture. They're Mexican, Latino specifically, and I'm Caucasian, but his mother pulls the culture card a lot and has even said to my own parents that Caucas Caucasians aren't really touchy-feely with their own family, which was a split feeling because my mother's side of the family is very touchy-feely, but my dad's side is extremely conservative. Uh, I'm usually pretty okay with being touched, but if I'm uncomfortable or overwhelmed, I don't want to be touched. I used to be one of those kids who was always giving people hugs. Now, whenever I come over, she hardly acknowledges my existence, let alone speaks to me. Am I the asshole for speaking up about not wanting to be touched? Edit, they're Latino, Mexican specifically. Thank you to the commenter who corrected me. So I wanted to talk about this because again, I think this is one of those things where like boundary setting and like, you know, in, in this like relationship context, like this shit's messy. I want to be super clear. Being a culturally competent and aware person in a relationship is very important. You know, and especially as white people, it's important for us to do the work of recognizing and acknowledging how our like privilege and cultural experiences are often overwhelming the culture of other people. And we just like, you know, fucking steamroll right over top of other people's cultural norms and experiences. And like, that's fucked up. Uh, we should fucking stop doing that. However, it is also very important for us to acknowledge here that no one, is entitled to your physical space, to touch your body, to violate your physical boundaries in any way. That's never an appropriate expectation. And if someone says that to you, regardless of what the cultural expectation is, it is very inappropriate and it can feel very abusive when you're on the receiving end of that. Because especially if you're a person who is fearful about hurting other people's feelings or you're a people pleaser or you, you know, there's a power dynamic there. The internalized belief or the thing that is heard then um, can be that you're entitled to my body in whatever way that you want to be and I can't say no. Which is a super fucking fucked up thing to communicate <laughs> to someone. And I don't know that this person meant it that way. I don't want, I want to be clear. I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth or assign intention where there maybe wasn't one, but it is okay for us to voice like, Hey, my body, like my space, not really feeling that right now. Especially when we talk about like sensory issues that come along with like neurodivergency and um, mental illness generally, or if there's a trauma response, it is very much always okay for people to set boundaries and limits around what you are willing to put up with or do with your own body. Because again, we can't control other people. Um, we can't force people to stop trying to touch you, but you can certainly move your own body out of the goddamn way when someone is trying to touch you. And if they're offended by that, those are their feelings to sit with. Something that I say to my clients a lot is that if someone feels hurt by a boundary that you've set or they have a negative emotional reaction, 
Maybe that's an important feeling for them to sit with. Maybe this is good growth and good learning to happen right now um, because that emotional discomfort is telling us something. We oftentimes feel bad when we have done something that's wrong. That, that doesn't entitle you to force other people to do the things that you want them to do to ease your own emotional discomfort though. It is very uncomfortable for us to grow and to acknowledge how we fucked up or did something wrong. That doesn't mean though that this person is able to say like, oh, well, like that hurt my feelings and so therefore you're wrong. I really want to encourage people to honor that sometimes boundary setting will hurt people's feelings. Oftentimes it will. Um, boundary setting is usually fucking unpopular and I know that that's very difficult, um, but that doesn't mean that you're necessarily doing the wrong thing, especially if we are focusing on the boundary setting from the self perspective of like controlling myself and honoring my need for safety and promoting the, the you know, need that I have for like safety, security, kindness, like whatever the fuck. If we are not trying to control or manipulate or hurt other people, it is okay for you to set boundaries regardless of the impact that that has on other people. There is also, I think, a conversation to be had about partners, again, like learning how to support each other here and not doing the thing where we perceive a problem as a you versus me. Uh, issue and, and instead reframing that to be about us versus this issue and not even necessarily us versus family of origin but just us versus like a misunderstanding but it's a lot easier for us to approach that conversation with mother-in-law or with family of origin by saying like we felt uncomfortable and so we are going to do this that or the other um, and to know that your partner has your back in these situations and so maybe there's not even like a verbal boundary setting that's happening it's just that your partner scoots in between you and, and mother-in-law um, when they notice that you're feeling overwhelmed, you know? That's a very useful dynamic to have in a relationship. And again, like part of the boundary setting and the trust building there. Um, and so having these conversations and being very clear and, you know, empowering yourself to voice these things is okay and is allowed and like, you know, doesn't make you an asshole for sure. That's all of the ones that I have for today. I tried to pick ones that gave us like good substance to dissect here, but also that we weren't like droning on and on forever. Um, if you guys do enjoy this, please let me know, leave me comments. Um, definitely, you know, like the video and, and all of that stuff. Um, I appreciate when you guys let me know what your thoughts and feelings are. So I would love to chat with you in the comments. Please let me know if you guys have thoughts or feelings or opinions that are different than mine. I love to have conversations about this as long as you guys are being kind and respectful to each other and to me in the comments. <laughs> I would love to know what your guys' thoughts and feelings are. If I missed something or misinterpreted something, let me know. In the meantime, like the video. Uh, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. We make content like this and like other cute little educational moments. Um, and share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.